Been hemmed into the city, now it's time to explore the country. A trip out to Lacrava will be just the thing. I'm so appreciative of Rob lending me a boat while I wait for mine to be delivered to I believe the only Timor traffic rule is that if you want to cut in front of someone, you do. Need a bit of air in the tyres before we go too far. Remember that one Timor traffic rule? takes me out towards Crystal Road with a right hand turn somewhere along here. starts to get bone jarringly bumpy just about here. The GoPro beautifully irons that out so you can't really see it on the video but please believe me uh, it was rough. Another feature is that just about yeah. everywhere yeah. I pull over, somebody will want to stop and talk to me. And those somebodies won't even necessarily be pedestrians. People will just pull up because there's a Malay, a foreigner, and want to chat. Photos everywhere, they don't really do the natural beauty justice, but I have to take them nonetheless.
just confirming this is sped up footage in case Mama is watching. More breathtaking views, probably shouldn't have stopped here, but uh, I couldn't resist. Safe or otherwise, a Malai with a camera is too much to resist, and so stops another random stranger. street markets. More photos. These bundles of wood are prolific as well. I think they must be for firewood. They're the epitome of Timor Tiny. It truly is amazing what you can fit on the scooter. The greatest traffic hazard is wild animals. Goats, ducks, steer, dogs, they'll all just wander straight in front of you. A lot of army traffic has been heading into Dili. I think there's a Veterans Day planned for not too long hence. As I pass Manitoutou, turn right, head inland and wind my way up the mountains, the scenery begins to change again. I rise to meet the clouds and for the next few hours, I end up with chattering teeth, uh, soaking clothes and uh, a very different experience. Just magnificent scenery. Last 10 kilometers of the trip is a dirt track full of potholes, uh, difficult to navigate, uh, but a lot of fun to ride. Didn't really, time it, but I, was, I suspect it would be something like an hour that it took me, maybe an hour and a half to, to ride that 10k. 
got bogged on one of my wrong turns and this happy crew helped to pull me out. I replaced a dead GoPro battery when I got to Laclava, the final destination, because it was just so wet and cold and miserable. All I did was turn around and ride straight home again. It's the journey, not the destination. Beautiful old Portuguese buildings in La Clabar, one of which uh, I was reminded when I got home would have taken me in to warm me, dry me and give me a hot drink, but I forgot. The GoPro politely smooths out the bone jarring shaking from these really rough roads but if you watch the drops of rain on the camera lens that shake up and down that gives you some sense just a, an inkling of uh, what my body and the bike were doing shaking up and down through the potholes the dents in the road uh, the, the rocks and, and just uh, attempting to stay upright I need to turn left or right here? Let's try left. Mm, I'm not convinced this is feeling correct. Nope, definitely not right. Time to make a U-turn and try the right hand bend instead. Hello. Wrong way. Back to where I went wrong. Yep, this is definitely better. The thing about muddy potholes is that if you go too slowly, you're going to get stuck and that's going to spell the end. Most of Laclabar's potholes are not all that deep, but some just make an exception. I was pretty pleased with how I navigated most of the potholes, navigating in and around without major incident, until here. A whole lot deeper than expected, this just swallowed the bike and me, hit the ground with a reasonable amount of force and gashed my arm. But I was actually far more concerned about flooding the engine, so I wanted to get that bike upright out of the puddle and start it again just as quickly as I could. I was pretty keen not to stop long enough to even work out whether or not I was sore. Uh, but when I stopped for petrol later on I discovered that I was fairly wounded on my arm and uh, looked like I had a major gash in my leg but that just turned to be, out to be a leech which must have been knocked off in the incident.
very grateful that both the bike and the boy seemed to be operating well. I was keen to give my arm a rinse at some point. Uh, stumbled across some clean running water, parked the bike on idle so that it didn't have chance to flood still, gave it a bit of a rinse uh, and that was just going to have to do until I could get back for some proper medical review. Here's another fairly large pothole. I think I might go round this one. Still tentative about the straight through approach, it seemed appropriate to take my chances with the bushes rather than the pothole this time. Potholes weren't the only challenge though, the mud was just so slippery after fresh rain and downhill had to really watch uh, that the bike had enough traction to stop in time or to slow when there were obstacles. Don't forget to watch the rain drips on the GoPro lens for a true sense of how bumpy this journey was. However beautiful the scenery and however much fun the dirt track was, I was grateful nonetheless to get back to the sealed road. Not that this was without challenge. The tarmac was hot and freshly wet, which is a disaster waiting to happen on a two-wheeled vehicle. But I rode with care further incidents. As I descended, the rain clouds finally cleared, the road dry. 
dried, the air warmed, and eventually my clothes even began to dry. The bozo in that ute, for some reason, was determined not to let me pass, swerving right whenever there was an opportunity. I was keen to let him know my intention was to pass, and in so doing I ended up probably tailgating the guy. Clearly that really annoyed him. Nonetheless, his response was, shall we say, unique threw litter out the window as I rode. Another opportunity to pass, he'd better swerve right again. But I was done with the games and determined to put him behind me. Pretty smooth going from there on reasonably decent roads. I say something about decent roads? Half the road caved out is a frighteningly frequent occurrence on these roads. The helmet I was wearing was a little bit too small and actually ended up giving me a headache after a couple of hours ride. So nearing Dilly, I ended up pulling over and was just taking a break uh, off on a T intersection from the main road. And uh, it caused a bit of a stir that there was a Malai sitting there on his motorbike. But of course this Malai had a an arm dripping with blood and uh, so there was a crowd that gathered around me none of whom spoke English until a 14 year old joined and she did a little bit of nervous translating and eventually ushered me into their place and I stopped and spent an hour or so with a beautiful family who fed and watered me and cared for me uh, and it was a beautiful end to the trip.